What up, what up, great people? Bester G. Lady T. Her responses are slow. Uh, it's Monday, and we're about to kick it into high gear. We're excited about uh, being here. Uh, this has been a, a, a blessed beginning to a brand new year, and I hope it has been for you. Um, I always start out by uh, reminding or uh, giving reminders. Uh, I want to remind you and make sure you keep this uh, at the forefront of all your thoughts that God loves you. He really does. He, 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 uh, he loves you tremendously. Uh, God created you for something special. Remember that. Don't ever, 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 ever think that he has forgotten about you and he's not seeing you. Uh, I, I, I'm still thinking about the uplift from uh, Friday's uplift that uh, we have to uh, master the rough spots. Sometimes we encounter rough spots as believers and, 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 and it's difficult and it seems like we have been forsaken by our God, but you haven't. You have not. I want to let you know you have not been forsaken. Uh, God loves you. There's tremendous plans for your life. There's an expected end to all the chaos that you're going through. Uh, there'll be other challenges. Yes, and yes, and amen. There's things that you're going to experience as a believer. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. He's always there at our uh, willingness uh, uh, to, to allow him to work on our behalf. Uh, you will see the victory in your life. You will believe to see the goodness of God in your land, the living in your right now. You will see it. You will see the blessings of the Lord. You are blessed of God. You are highly favored of God. You are uh, all of that. I don't want you to get it mistaken that you are all of that. Sometimes you just need to remind yourself. I always say this, that faith people, the biggest thing that they need is a reminder. Mm -hmm. Sometimes after going through a series and, 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 and uh, one challenge after the other one challenge and then here another challenge, sometimes you don't even have a chance to even get your breath between challenges. But I'm here to tell you that you will overcome you will overcome. And I'm reminding you that you were built for this. You were uh, constructed by God for this. Every challenge that you will face, you will overcome it. You will win. This is a season of determination for you. This year is a different year. It's a year of determination. You will win. You will win. Don't you doubt yourself. Don't you change your confession under pressure either. Stay in there. Stay in there. Stay in there. You are built with stuff. Now, uh, thank you, Tanya Kelly, for being in the house. Katrina Robinson, uh, uh, Marquita Pascal, thank you so much. Raquel, great seeing you in the house and great seeing you this weekend as well. Sarah is in the house. Do you have your shades on, Sarah? Thank God for this week of brightness. Thank God for a, a special time. Now, you can go ahead on and start sharing this video. Uh, we're going to start getting into something. I want to be, uh, <clears throat> this year is a year of definition. Uh, this is a year of, of the specifics. We got to define a thing. We got to know what this thing is. This won't be a year that you just casually walk into anything. You are going to know definitively what it is, what it what it gives you as a consequence of your attachments to it. You're going to know. You are not going to let things just happen. You want to know exactly why they're happening and what are the advantages of you being there. Yeah. And you know what? You have that right. You have a right to, because of your, uh, 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 who you are. Because people that are building something that is unique, they are very careful not to attach themselves to things that are just random. And you're going to have to make that decision. You're going to have to see yourself as God sees you before you attach yourself to things that uh, constantly causes us to lose time. We're constantly losing time by attachments. Things that uh, uh, so, so many times believers or, or Christians thought it was their duty or their responsibility to uh, grab a, a, a catch hold to anybody. 
And that's what we were taught. And so we felt condemned or somebody tried to condemn us if we decided I'm not touching that. I won't I won't touch that. Well, let me let me explain it to you very carefully. It is not your obligation to touch things that are not going anywhere with your crystal self. I'm talking about your crystal self. If the thing that you're about to connect to is not asking, seeking, or knocking and, and, and trying to go to higher levels, Jesus didn't. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that Jesus could not do many miracles because of the expectancy level of certain places. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus knew that if they're not asking, not knocking and seeking, there's probably nothing special is going to happen. The woman with the issue of blood and all through the Bible, the centurion, these were people that was desperately seeking a change in their life. As a matter of fact, you're desperately seeking a change uh, uh, can rearrange the schedule of God for your life. The woman that had the issue of blood was was not on schedule. Mm. But Jesus was on his way to Jehira's house, Mark 5. And because she had such a great level of determination and expectancy, it, his schedule changed from the daughter of Jehira's to this woman. And so if you are intending this year to do something incredible for God, you're going to have to scrutinize the relationships and everything that you attach yourself to. Now, yes, you will be told that you think that you all of that. Well, I'm here to tell you, as a man think it, so is he. You better think that you are all of that for you to get to that place of all of that that God has already prepared for you. That's not, that's not you being arrogant. That's you being confident about who you are and the specifics of it. And so we move forward with that. Now, I want to say this again because this year I'm going to be very direct. I'm going to be very clear about what God has intended in me and, and my gift. And I suggest that you do the same thing, no matter how much it gets under people's skin. It's not your objective to make people mad, but you must understand, I've got to be obedient to the call that's on my life. You got to take that posture that I'm just doing what God has told me to do. And that's the place of the blessing. I call it the secret place. Uh, there's a people will ask you what is your secret to being successful and it's just you being in your secret place that's the place that uh, uh someone wrote a song that the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of god and that's the secret place that brings the blessings that everybody think uh, what's your secret does it say is you being in the will of god concerning you and saying and doing what god has called you to do no matter who disagree with it. And you know what? People have a right to disagree with it. Don't get messed up because people disagree with what God has told you. People have a right, if they want to, to talk about you. They have a right to their opinion. They have a right to all of those things. Just don't you relent because somebody is talking. Thank you, Pastor Nolan Brown. Let's get into this. I got I got some, some beautiful things today. Uh, Dr. Salento Lewis, thank you. Pastor Deidre Johns, thank you. Sonia is in the house. What up, Sonia? Sonia is in the house. Now, we call this the secret place. I'm going to give some highlights from, a, from a, 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 a teaching I did yesterday at Network of Believe. Man, you should have been there. It was powerful in the house. But I got a couple of things that I want to make sure I highlight that God really told me to write down because there's some people that's listening to me today. We've come into this year, 2019, which is a blessed year. I always try to start off lunchtime up there letting you know that you are the one that God desires. See, 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 you are the one that God's, God desires to use. We have to make this very clear because the doctrine for the 18, the 17, 16, 15 has been a doctrine that said, that suggested to many that God was not interested in you. I'm telling you emphatically he is. And then it was a, a part of the other parts, the other level of it was that it didn't matter uh, what you did and what you did not do, God was still going to pour his best on you. That's not true. Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you don't have what God uh, uh, gave you at birth. There's many people right now that is full of, 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 of potential and purpose that will never, ever walk into it. 
that's one of the most detrimental uh, uh, beliefs that we live under. Many are sitting back waiting on this thing to happen without putting forth anything, without even thinking about how do I even get started. And and so what it it, it is called it has caused us to be what is called procrastinators. Uh, we sit around and did nothing, but I'm here to tell you, you are blessed with the stuff. Now that's God's part. Now on your, on your end, you're going to have to connect to what God says. Destiny is an option, not a guarantee. Say it again. Destiny, because we, we say that it's an automatic. <laughs> Listen to me. Destiny is an option, not a guarantee. I've got to agree before I get the guarantee. I've got to agree. There's so many people that have died with the potential. The world knew what the potential was, but because of bad decision, not connecting, things didn't go right. We have to be in a place that we learn and we make the right decisions. You have to study, as the scripture said, to show yourself approved. This has been written there all the time, but here we are. We have people that tell you it doesn't matter. Just, just be you. Just be there. What if the you that you have been mm-hmm. is not the you that you need to be? We, we have to understand that there are disciplines that we all must, uh, uh, discipline decisions that we all have to make to really get to the place that's called maximize life. All of us, we have to do it. I'm not sitting here preaching to you and saying, I have obtained. No, I'm saying we all. I'm making the necessary changes, aggressive discipline changes needed because I've lived several years in what is called good life by people in terms. You live a good life. Well, good life is good, but good is not good enough when better is possible. And and and, and so what happens, you can call it greedy if you want, or you can call it growth. I call it growth. Some people that, that you intimidate in your actions of going for what is true and what you really want, they will intimidate them, so they call you greedy. But it's not greedy for you. It's called growth. You are trying to grow into, here's what is happening. So many people are fighting this thing called depression and, and, and so many uh, uh, other uh, uh, psychological battles. You know why it's happening? It's simple. You are an underachiever because your bar has been set so low and you can reach the low bar easily because you're so you're so blessed and endowed with the gift and you set the bar so low because of the thinking of your surroundings. And so what happens as a consequence, you are bored or you are depressed because you, you're not doing, you're not maximizing your life because you're trying to make sure you don't get on people's nerves. I want to make sure I don't, I don't, I don't want to get on. No, there's so much more for you. Yes, when you uh, make the decision that I'm going for it all, what happens? People start talking and they start saying you thank you. But this is the year that you are released from the criticism that are, that that has you have allowed to stunt your growth. It won't happen this year. You are going for it like you've never gone for it before. You have been blessed with this endowment from God to achieve and to and to and to go to heights that the scripture suggests that eyes haven't seen, neither is heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man. I believe God's best move is on the way for some people right now that perhaps have never had God to move in their life before. I think God's best move is about to happen in the life of you. People that have never, ever, ever had a move from God. You see, I start getting close to the camera. I start getting excited when I feel this. I, I believe that the, the greatest move of God has not even been seen yet. It can't be. It, 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 it has not because God is a progressive God. He's a progressive God from a foundational standpoint. Amen. And, and I believe that there's some of you that are listening to me right now. You have not even scratched the surface of what it is that God has planted inside of you. You're one decision away from destiny. And so you're gonna have to think this out really carefully because destiny is knocking at your door and you have got to make the right decision. You got to answer the call. There's something that you've got to do. And it's a difficult decision that you have to make. Uh, You're gonna have to find people that engage the thing that God put in you. God placed that in all of us. I I think it was John Gray that perhaps said it, that you're going to have to find the tribe that's got your vibe. 
because you need this to be working all the time. You need to be in, in a place of movement all the time. Thank you, Paris. Thank you, uh, Chris. Thank you, Pastor Nolan. Now, watch this. I want to share something with you because I knew that there will be some watching right now and perhaps some people that are going to watch this video later. Thank all of you for watching. I, I really appreciate you. Now, listen to this very carefully. If you have not shared me, go ahead on and share me because I need this word to get out. I need this word. Thank you, Sean Cross, for the Gala Watson. Thank you so much. I need Raina, thank you. I need this word to get out because here's some truth that is going to govern our year. Here, here, here is some truth that is going to govern our year. Uh, uh, you're going to be challenged. You're going to be challenged. I hear, I'm hearing something else. You're going to be challenged like you've never been challenged. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me, people. Um, God sees and God's, God knows. God is restoring his honor again amongst his people. And everybody is about to see the glory of God fall again because for too long, we as believers have set him in the corner. And he was our third or fourth option. And we called ourselves the representation of God, but we threw the, 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 the God that knows the God that sees the all powerful God in the corner. And we began to worry like other people did as mm. if we had no hope. And that's been the gist of it. We, 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 we came up with solutions to problem by our own power. We left God out and then we called it God because we were taught you got to give God glory. So what we did, we worked it out and it was a small win and we gave and said that was God. Well, God says, I wanted to win much bigger than that. I wanted to do something that your power, Zechariah says that the fourth chapter, he says, it's not by power nor by might, but by God's spirit, say it the Lord. What he's trying to do in you is something that only the supernatural power of God, now I'm talking can produce in the life of people that perhaps have never had him move on this level. Mm -hmm. You think that you are disqualified. You think that you don't even, what is that? You, well, you're about to see the hand of God and the exchange of God on that level where he's about to move on you. As a matter of fact, this move from God is going to teach the people that has never been taught because it's going to be undeniable that the, the, the experience that you are seeing is, is a God move. It's going to bring reverence and awe again to the body of believers and then the onlookers as well. You need to hear what I'm saying today. It's about to be an incredible move of God. You can share me. Go ahead. Share me. Thanks, Sky, for being out. Share me. Now, listen to this. This is, this is very important. Believers, stop inboxing me, please, with these messages about Tara and about all of the things that are happening. I cannot believe that the body of believers are so afraid of all of, all of the hoax that we see. We're breeding fear. The, the, the very design, the very thought of us spreading as if we have no hope is in a complete defiance of your supernatural God. It's because we don't know who he is, and it's because we have not seen a move from him. We have not seen, so we are scared. We think that we fall in the category with the others that have no hope. Well, you are blessed by the best. And you're going to have to hear again what God, this is why there's such a radical change in leadership right now amongst the body of believers. God is raising up the kings in this season that are going to know the word of God and going to protect the people through the word of God. We are hearing about all kind of hopes and we are breeding fear. We are even allowing it to happen over the pulpits, telling people what to watch out for because it's crazy out here. And, and, and yeah, it is crazy out there. But there's a place called secret. And if you can get into that secret place, the scripture says very clearly, if you can get in that secret place, I want to read that. Let me find that because I got something else I need to say very quickly. Uh, Psalms 91, verse number one. Here it is uh, 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 for those of you that's right now that think that you've been left out there alone and you it's, it's just up to you to try to figure out how this life is going to happen. I want to speak emphatic and very de definitive to you. You are not left alone. Your God is God and he sees you. If you will allow him for one time to work out the situation and let him direct your path, you will see significant change. You've been trying to work it out and then invite him in to uh, uh, finance your bad decision. 
He wants you to consult him first so he can give you the decision to make. Mm -hmm. In all your ways, you're going to have to acknowledge him first, and he will give the direction and the path to go down. Are you listening to me? I needed to drop this in. I was going somewhere else. And so I want to read Psalms 91, the secret place. Now, here's the emphasis on this protective place, this secret place, this dwelling place that brought, provides a provision for those that can't provide for themselves. Here's what Psalms 91 says. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Now, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. In other words, there is a secret place of the Most High, and he said, Who, whomsoever will make a decision to go to that place. Whosoever will make a decision to go to that place that is the secret place. It's not him making you come. It's him saying, I'm here. You can come. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, listen very carefully. Everybody is not in the secret place. So that means that everybody is not under the shadow. So that means that everybody don't have the cover. Hmm. This is believer and non-believer. Everybody is not in the secret place. Everybody is not under the cover. Everybody's not under the shadow. Now, if you are in the shadow, as the scripture just said, shall abide under the shadow, right? Uh, you know that you got to be very close to be covered by a shadow. Right. You got to almost be attached to, to be a part of the shadow. So if the Bible is saying something, there's a closeness that must be obtained to be in the secret place that provides a covering. Everybody is not there. He says, he that about it in the secret place. Have you discovered your secret place? Or are you running to the same place that everybody else is running to? Let me say it once again. If you run into the place that everybody else is running to, then it's not a secret. <laughs> That's simple, right? If everybody else is running there, then it's not a secret place. <laughs> Let me move on because this is getting interesting. I will say of the Lord, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snares of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be that shield and buckler. Now, I'm talking to people that are afraid and don't know what to do in this season, that you're hearing all the stuff on the news. You're watching all of the things that are, are coming down. You're getting these uh, uh, chain uh, inboxes about terror attacks and about all that stuff. I'm here to tell you that there's a secret place that you can abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Remember, shadow means that you're real close. Remember, if, ever, if everybody by general consensus is going there, it ain't a secret. <laughs> he suggested that you find that secret place where you find your special shelter from the thing that is plaguing you or has threatened you. It is there and it is available right now. Now, listen to what the second verse says. After I have gotten in the secret place, I have made, he that dwelled, I have made the decision that I'm going to find my secret place. I made a decision. I'm going to be close enough to God that I'm under his shadow. I made my decision. I'm going to make him my cover. Then he says, verse 2 is applicable to you. What is verse 2? I will say of the Lord. He says, you can't say this of the Lord. Your testimony is not true until you got in the secret place. Your testimony is not true until you got under the shadow. He says, until you come close and find the secret place, don't be trying to say you're just talking random words. This is why resolutions haven't been <laughs> truthful as we thought they were going to be because we come into another year and we didn't seek the secret place. We just made a resolution. I will say in my resolution, he says, you can't say until you're in the secret place. You can't say until you're under my shadow. Because your words will only carry weight when you're in my presence. Because when you're in my presence, you can hear what I'm saying and you can echo to the world what I've just said. What made Elijah so powerful in 1 Kings uh, uh, 17 
uh, verse number one. You know what made him so powerful in his word? Let me show you. It, it, the Bible says he was in a secret place. I ain't never seen that, Pastor D. Well, let me open it up to you. Let me unpack it to you. It says, and Elijah, here it is, 1 Kings 17, it just dropped in my spirit. I'm off, I'm off, I'm off the I'm off the chart down. Let me go. It says, and Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth. We look at what he said, before whom I stand. Right now, I'm in the secret place. I'm standing in his presence. You don't see it because it's a secret place. But I'm about to speak from this secret place, and you're about to see God perform what I just said because I'm standing right in the front of him. Uh, before I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. But it, uh, in other words, but according to what I'm about to say, because I'm standing in the secret place before the Lord. In other words, I don't care how, how impossible the thing that I'm about to announce to you is in your eyesight. I have confidence that it's going to happen because I'm standing in the presence of God. I'm standing in the secret place. I'm standing in and abiding under the shadow. I won't leave his presence. So I know that what I'm about to say is exactly what God said. Then he said, if you're there, if you're there, then I would say, I would say to the Lord, he is my refuge. Now I know that he's my covering. Now I know. Now let me skip down because I'm speaking to those that are getting uh, uh, it twisted when you see the calamities of this world, you see that the world is in trouble, you see that there could be this attack, there could be that attack, there could be this happening and that happening, and you're scared and you're running scared. You're going to church and you're scared. Uh, as a matter of fact, when you get there, your preacher's scared. It's as if our doctrine is saying you're on your own. Well, I'm here to tell you, you're never alone. There is a secret place. If you could get to there, if you would desire there, God will meet you there, and then he'll give you what to say. As a matter of fact, Elijah in 1 Kings 17, when he spoke the prophecy to the king Ahab, he says, according to my word. That's a very interesting uh, suggestion from uh, 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 Elijah the Tishbite, that if you read in scripture, you know, you don't find any historical content as to where Elijah comes from. It doesn't give his credentials. It doesn't say he went to the astronomical school of ministry. It don't tell you what his degrees are, his doctrines are. It doesn't, it doesn't say any of that. Only thing it says is he shows up on the scene and he says, by my word. Now, here, here it is again, the secret place. Uh, Psalm 91 says, he that dwelleth in the secret place, meaning I have come to the place that I desire God. I desire to stand under his shadow. In other words, that means that I'm close to God. I'm not randomly in a relationship. I'm so attached to him that I can abide under his shadow. And so Elijah is showing you an example of someone that is standing in the secret place of God. He says, I'm prophesying uh, Ahab, you don't see him, but I'm standing under the shadow. And what I'm about to say is gonna be a representation because what comes out of my lip comes straight from his mouth. I'm just a conduit for the words of God. Notice straight, hear God speaking in his ear as he's speaking come. He says, so by my, that's the place of authority when I'm standing in the presence. He says, by my word, because I am standing in the presence of God. Now, notice what he says, it's very powerful. He speaks a supernatural miracle that has never happened in his time without any credentials. Hmm. I wanna emphasize, without any credentials, he speaks a supernatural miracle because it's not by power nor by might, Zechariah says, it's not by your education, but it's by your revelation mm. that the power of God, and when you're in the presence through relationship of God, you can say some things and you can defy some things. Here it is, Elijah is actually defying something. That's why he says, by my word. In other words, he's standing before a king that has established a word that was the rule in the land. He's standing before a king that what he said mattered in the land. As a matter of fact, there's a famine in the land because of the actions of a king. 
And here it is, Elijah is standing a no name. Nobody knows where he come from, uh, who he is. He says he's a Tishbite, but it does not give his uh, uh, credentials. And he says, by my word. In other words, I'm about to defy the word that is the authority right now. And I'm going to say something. And when I say this word, the God of heaven is going to back up what I'm about to say. And he says, there will be no rain this many years. And you know what? He didn't sit around to see what you think about that, Ahab. He had the confidence that I've been standing in the presence of God. And what I just said, I'm about to see. And so let me posture myself because I'm going to see what I'm going to say. I'm going to speak to somebody right here because you've been afraid. And it's because you have not, we have not gotten close enough to God for him to take away our fears. <laughs> we have not been close enough for God to take away the fear. There's a new level of leadership that is being raised up right now as I speak. There's a new level of, of leadership that is being raised up that's going to be in the secret place. You, 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 are, you are the abiders uh, under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes, people are going to look for you and they can't find you. And you're going to say, I'm under the shadow. I'm in a secret place. You probably can't see me in this next season. I will show up. Yeah. Ooh, ooh wee. All right, all right. Hey, Mom, thank you for being in the house. Kathy Burrell, thank you so much for being in the house. Regina Strength of God, thank you for being in Now watch this. Secret place. Oh, my goodness. You will show up with emphasis on showing up. You will show up to things. Emphasis on showing up. See, see, in this system that we live in now, people want you to emerge. And, and, and that's so different between emerge and showing up. See, the emergence uh, system is that you sit here and 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 we perhaps will find a time to let you be something after a while, after we've seen you sit here. Well, if you read Elijah's history, he didn't sit there. This was not an emerging order for God and say, you go and you, you go and you hang around Ahab for a while, and then there will be a time that he'll allow you to speak if he ever come to a spiritual place enough that he recognize who you are. Mm -hmm. That's called emerging. But here's what God is saying in this season for the new leadership that's going to speak. He said, show up. I just need you to show up. And when you show up, speak. When you show up, you're going to change the word of the territory that you are sent and sanctioned to be in. Are you hearing me today? There is a shifting as I speak in the leadership right now. There is a shifting in the leadership as I speak right now. I have got to drop this into your spirit because you cannot take this next season for granted. There's an obligation from God that rides you. <clears throat> and you cannot be honorably disobedient in this season. You didn't ask for it. God chose you for such a time as this. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Now, here's what is important that I want you to know. So don't be afraid because there is, when God sends you to a secret place or when he gives you secret or, or, or specific directions, he always gives uh, uh, unusual provision. Wherever God guides, he provides. You don't see it right now and you won't see it until you show up. No way. Elijah had no idea that he was about to prophesy because God didn't give him a preview of what he was about to say. Because him prophesying in the wrong place, not being before the right person was not, it doesn't matter. So when you get out of obedience into the right place, God will start allowing you to say, Elijah just said, I'm not saying something that's been pre-rehearsed. I'm saying something that I'm standing right now in the front of God and he just released it. If he had told me to say it previously, I probably wouldn't have came here and said it because I would have understood I'm standing before Ahab and he's got a wife named Jezebel that's a killer. And I ain't, I'm, I'm not ready for my ministry to die yet. So I'm not going to say that. I'm not ready. I'm not ready for this. And so here it is. He's saying to you that if you obey in this season, you are the next level of leadership that if you will step forward in this season, you don't have the credentials. Nobody cares about that. You're not trying to emerge on the scene. God is saying you're going to show up and you're going to speak what he said 
and he's going to allow everything that you say. You're about to change an entire world with what is about to come out of your mouth. Are you listening to me? And so the Bible says here in the eighth verse, it says everything that's happening in the world, only with your eyes, watch this, only with your eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. In other words, if you don't go on Facebook, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, you won't even know of the plagues that is hitting the world. And CNN and Fox and all of that, TV and all that, you won't know because you're standing in the secret place where you're abiding under the shadow of the Almighty and God is protecting you. He's set you up for protection in this season because he's chosen you. And when you obey what God says, he says, I'm going to put a shield around you that no Nobody can touch you. Nobody can touch you. Now, watch this. Proverbs uh, chapter 25. Thank you. Proverbs chapter 25, verse number two. Proverbs chapter 25, verse number two. Tro Proverbs chapter 25. It, here, here, here's the new leadership order. Please hear this. New leadership order. Watch what it says here. God is not giving this to everybody. Just because you've been around and got a lot of credentials don't mean that you're going to hear anything in this next season. Mm -hmm. Please hear this. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2. You read, looking that up? Uh, let me make sure I'm correct on it. Watch what it says here. It says, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing. Watch this. It is the glory of God. It brings glory to God, of God to conceal a thing, but it is the honor of a king to seek it out. Uh, what is that? Proverbs. <laughs> I dropped in my spirit. I'm gonna, uh, oh, let me read it. Let me read it. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Now, this is a very powerful passage of scripture because I need you to see this. Now, watch what he's saying. God get glory when he conceals a thing. And when kings, his leadership, say, I want to know what the heart of God is. And I'm going after what he has hidden from everybody in secret. This season is filled with revelation. They call secrets. God is not giving it to everybody. It's there and it's available. But the Bible just said it is his glory to conceal. In other words, if you are not hungry, you are not hearing. If you are not hungry, you are not hearing. If you are not going after God, he's not revealing to you. Now, you're going to come up with some clever words. Remember, in, in, in everything God has created, there's an acceptable substitution or what is called a counterfeit in the, uh, in, in the, in, in the devil's world. He's already constructed a, an acceptable, uh, almost replica of what God has created. Please hear me on this. And so it's not surprising that when we look at church application, Ephesians 4, and they call the fivefold. Uh, application, rest assured that there is an exact replica, an acceptable substitution that the enemy has already constructed. And most won't know because their discernment level is not there to see. And that, that does, so when God says, I have concealed the thing and I'm only giving it to those that have sought it out, and you have to be a king to even see what God said. You have got to be designed for this next level of leadership for you to even hear. If you are not in God's uh, design, you will hear some things and it'll sound exactly like what God has said. And you won't know because you have a discerning spirit. And most things that happen, God always, always, listen to me, listen to me very carefully. When God places a thing out, the enemy hears it as well. Mm -hmm. And he issues, again, an acceptable substitution. It looks, it looks, it looks. And, and, and so what happens if I am uh, uh, the, the man, if you will, and, and with the emphasis on the man, I am the man. If my attitude and my narcissistic uh, spirit is I am the man, what happens when people put a demand on the man, the man provides the people with something that has always worked on them. It doesn't mean that it's an inspiration of God. It's just, I know that you trust me. And if I'm the man, I'm going to say something that sounds like what you need when I don't even have a clue. I just got to remain in the position of the man. But this is a new season. I gotta get there, I gotta get there. This is a new season of leadership God is shifting right now, and he, and the glory of God is to conceal, but the honor for these kings that are raised, they are going to seek out 
what God has hidden in Revelation. That's why the scripture says there's revelation hidden from generation to generation. It was not God hid it from us. He hid it for us yeah. because he hid it for you that will seek after what he's saying. It's going to happen in the secret place under the shadow, meaning that you're going to have to have a close relationship with God again. Not what's been presented. Not what has been presented. There are many people right now. Let me let me get to this because I had God had me to write this. There's so many right now that's got big dreams. You came into 2019 with the big dream. You can still share me. You came into 2019 with a big dream. And you thinking that is going to happen without God on uh, on board as the master, as the leader. Forget it. It's not going to happen. I'm going to tell you right now. I got to be honest with you now. People are going to call me a hater because I'm telling the truth, but who cares? There's so many right now. I see it. I see it. Uh, you got a big dream. It's going to happen. I got to say this because I'm the one that loves you because I'm going to give you the instruction. All of us. We all are having to take inventory of the season. Uh, God says he will not just be a part of your process. We come up with the dream and we bring God on board because we need financing for this great idea. Here's what God is saying. He will no longer be just included in your saying God did this. He want to be the one that make the decision and he wants you to have the, the discipline enough to say, if he tells me to change everything, I'm ready to change it. I'm ready to do it. And this is why he says this is going to happen. It's going to be a God design because he says with you in the condition that you're in, if he allowed you to get to the place that you desire, flesh would glory. He would get no glory in it because you don't want to make the necessary changes in your life to bring glory. There's so many that's got big dreams. You have not decided to make any changes in your life. And what you are living in right now is not bringing God's glory. It completely defies the word of God. I'm going to say it again. What you're living in right now is not conducive to what you are asking God for. He says, if I allowed you to go there, flesh will glory. I am not going to allow your flesh to glory in this season. Thank you very much. It's not happening. Now, for those of you that are ready to discipline yourself, if what you are saying and you are hearing from God has not required some changes in your life, you're probably not hearing from God. It is called that acceptable substitution that the enemy will allow you to expend energy for year after year after year, hoping to come into the moment and you only see minimal successes. It's only because God says, I won't let that glory in my presence because you're not giving me the glory. You're trying to make your flesh glory. And you're calling it me. You're saying, thank God for it. But he said, if you wanted to glorify me, you would do as Jesus says. He says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Yeah, I told you to put him out. Yeah, I told you to put them out. Yeah, I told you couldn't live a life like that. Yeah, I told you that life wasn't pleasing to me. If your doctrine has suggested that God is going to be good with you not making changes, it's probably not the right one. I am sorry, but I got to speak what God has said. Here it is. The glory of God is to conceal a thing, but the honor of these kings is to seek a thing out. Here's the most important part of my text. It's called the secret place, and we're going to let you go. There's a new level of leadership that is coming as we speak. You can see the changes happening right now. They are happening. Here's what the new kings and leadership are going to seek out. They're seeking out the anointing again. They're going to seek out God's presence once again. They're going to seek, listen, hold on, hold on, hold on. They're not seeking tongues. Tongues is, is going to be a part of it. They're not seeking a gift. That stuff is without repentance. We, we're going to come to where we are not going to judge a relationship off a gift. That's one of the things that the tools the enemy uses to validate whom he wants to be in position. This is not about prophecy. This is not about speaking in tongues. That's a part of it. But the way that we're going to know whom God is put in position, it's by their lifestyle. They're going to seek the glory of God again. 
They're going to seek what his heart is on a matter again. They're going to seek his word and his direction again as to what should we do? How should we do this? It's going to bring the glory of God again back into his sanctuary called you. It's going to be your honor to seek out again what it is that God is calling you to be. You won't be caught up into what society and culture is thinking. You're only going to be concerned about what God is saying to you that brings him glory. This is going to change whether we are afraid and are scared and we are running and the opinion of social media and all the other outlets is going to be the thing that drive us and make we're going to make our decision based off what social media. They're not going to like me if I do this. They're not. Well, who cares? This is the season that you're not going for the likes. This is a brand new season. My brothers and sisters, this is not a branding season. For those of you that's trying to build a brand, it's probably going to be very difficult to see the supernatural exchange of God. God says he already have, have a brand built, and he's just looking for people that are ready to submit to what he's saying. So the new king are definitely going after the heart of God. And here it is, 1 Samuel, no, let's say 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel six, uh, chapter number 6, we see a new king that is emerging on the scene. His name is David. One of the first things that this king has in mind is that now that I've been acclimated into the level of kingship, where is the Ark of the Covenant? In, in other words, where is the anointing? At? I've, I've got the position. I've got the goal. People are calling my name. They are heralding me as the best. They're saying all manner of good things about me. Yes. That's good, but here's what I'm trying to seek out. Where is the anointing? Where is the Ark of the Covenant? Because I don't want to go down as good and never feel the experience of God's glory on my life. Because that is the place that I find out that I am unstoppable. That's the place that I find out I see God supernaturally. David, first thing he says is, where is the Ark of the Covenant? Now, this is interesting because there was a king and, and I told this message again, uh, a couple of uh, uplifts ago. Uh, Saul, what this season presents is the kings of God. The kings, 1 Samuel 16, king of God. The, the captains, whoa, this is powerful. The captains that kept the seat warm are about to be shifted out of position. Now, if you read in 1 Samuel uh, 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 chapter 9 and 10, we understand that God gives Samuel a directive and say, go and anoint. Saw captain over my inheritance. He didn't say to chapter 16 to go and anoint your horn of oil for my king. Now I'm going to get me a king. Now this is very interesting because Saul uh, um, kept the seat warm for 40, a whole generation. Here we are, we're in the shifting of a generation. God is erecting kings that seek the heart. Captains don't seek the heart, kings do. And so he says there have been captains that's been in position. Yeah, there's been generals that's been in place. And now he says, I am looking for my kings. I'm about to anoint the kings that's going to have my heart. And the first level of business is, where is the anointing? Where is the anointing? I don't want this seat if there's no anointing involved. I don't want to sit here. I don't want to worry about my riches and who's invading me and who's going to take. I don't want to worry about what I got. I don't want it to be my main campaign or how much I got, when I got it, and who I had to export to get it. I want the anointing. And so the Bible says, David, man, when you study this passage of scripture, the, uh, the, the Ark of the Covenant, the, the, the peace of God had been, the, the, the anointing had been stolen by the Philistines. You know the story. Second Kings, uh, uh, First Samuel five. They take possession. They took possession of the anointing. Oh, oh, this is very powerful. <laughs> this is. Very, let, let me say this. I, I got to get. It. It has been. A, 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 the. It seems like the world has taken possession of God's anointing. They. They've been able to lay hands on it and take it outside of the designated place. That's what's happened in First Samuel. See, the, the anointing was taken. By unrighteous men and taken into the house of Dagon. We've seen it happen because the people that were supposed to cherish it didn't cherish it. 
The only thing they wanted to do was call it up when they were in trouble. Mm. Israel wanted to call this thing up because they had been defeated. The first battle, they lost 4,000 men. Second battle, they, they, they called it and, and said, let's get the anointing because it always works when we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Let's call on God. But this season, God is not going to allow you to just call on him when you're in trouble. He's looking for people that have already got the position that say, now, I don't accept this position unless the anointing comes along with it. Now, the honor of these kings are to seek out. It's going to be difficult to find because it's hidden in good places. Woo! It's going to be hidden by people that did not recognize it. And so it's, it has been taken captive. And, the, and we know the story that God in, uh, 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 afflicted the, the Philistines with what is called, uh, in, the Bible says Imran, but what's called him, you know, in the private places. And they had to get rid of it. They sent it to a, 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 a place called Beth Shemlet and, 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 and to get it out of their camp. And then from there, it, it plagued that city. And then they went to a city, a town, a priest called Kajak Jerim. And it, it, it ended up in the house of Abinadad, who God had allowed to be uh, uh, the keeper of it. But he says, I'm a, I want you to put your son, Eliezer. That's a very powerful picture there, that the sons are about to take possession of the thing. And so, and so when David comes on, nowhere in the history of Saul, the captain of Israel, did he ask, where is the anointing? Where is the Not even, it, it wasn't even brought up. How can the anointing lay dormant that long without there being a conversation about it? How can it, how, how can it be disregarded like that? Because we got operations, we got money, we got finances, we got all of that. But the thing that we're missing is the anointing. Mm -hmm. The thing that brings healing is loss. We can give you temporary relief through finances, but we cannot give you the healing that will fix your heart because we have not sought the, the anointing. We have not even looked for it. We have not even given place to Saul. Never mentioned it. It's not mentioned. As a matter of fact, when it was taken uh, uh, possession by the Philistines and it ended up eventually in, in Abinadad's house, uh, this is actually, uh, this year is 11 BC before Christ that this happened. It was not even brought back into, into uh, the city of David until uh, 1048 BC. Look at the Lear span that the anointing was not even a part of Israel's history. Mm. The anointing. Now, now they was Israel still. They were having church. Mm. They were doing all the things. They had caused another thing called the acceptable substitution. We're still coming here. We're still doing what we usually do. But where's the anointing? Please be advised. I'm not talking about a shout. I'm not talking about speaking in tongues. I'm not talking about that because gifts and callings don't require any, any I don't even say empty, any repentance. And so here it is. Let me get back to it. David, when he comes in, 2 Samuel 6, first thing he says, I don't need to be king if I'm not anointed. I don't need. So I am seeking out that honors me and give God's glory. Because when I give God glory, he honors me. <laughs> uh, in other words, song says, we give God the glory, he gives us the victory. If you want to sign victory, seek out what God has concealed. Go and dig. That's why the Proverbs 25 2 says again, it is the glory of God to conceal. He's honored when the kings come and seek. It shows God that I want what you got. Please reveal unto me what you are trying to say. My very desire is to hear from you. The new level of leadership, let me say it once again, is to seek out what God has concealed. This won't be a season that everybody is hearing. There's a secret place that God has hidden his best stuff. And if you are not seeking God, you are not hearing. Yeah, the enemy is going to give you something to say. But if you're not seeking the glory of God again, it's not going to work. So the first thing David does, 2 Samuel 6, is uh, his first agenda is, let me find the anointing. Don't give me the riches if you don't give me the glory, Give God's, if God's glory is not involved. And so he goes down to Abinadad's house to bring up this ark that is the picture of God's anointing. You know, the text says that the sons of Abinadad, what they did was they, they, they built this elaborate cart. Please hear this. They built this beautiful 
uh, carrying device. They modified the carrying device. They said, we're going we're gonna to do this thing right. We're going to modify the carrying device of this anointing. We're going we're gonna, to uh, come up with new ideas. We're going to come up with new inspirations. Uh, all that old stuff is just all that old stuff, and we don't need that. We're going to modify it. We're going to come into new uh, uh, enlightenment on how to move this anointing. And so here it is. They please, when you're ready to move this anointing, don't let people that are not spiritual show you how to carry. Don't, uh, 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 mm -mm. don't let people that's not spiritual tell you how to carry your anointing. Uh, uh, that's the worst thing because they're going to modify. They're going to try to say by their own thoughts and how how the the culture is now. We need to redress this thing. Well, God don't need to be redressed. Come on. He is God. He is God. Please hear me. And so they, they decided to build a left cot. And, and so Tech says that as David with a good heart goes to retrieve the anointing, when he's bringing it back to the city of David, uh, the Bible says that the ox stumbled. The ox stumbled. And here, as a consequence, you know, he got Uzziah, one of his favorite people, decide, I'm going to do a good thing. Please hear this. I'm going to do a good thing. I'm, I'm going to save this anointing. I'm, I'm going to stick. I'm going to reach my hand now. And, and the Bible says that the, the, the Lord broke out uh, uh, against Uzziah and he died beside the ark, fell dead. This is very interesting. This is very interesting. First of all, uh, these new elaborate uh, ways of trying to carry the anointing to enhance what God is doing, be very careful. That's not the way God said do it. Now, I'm not against innovative. I'm not against us, us, us walking into new things. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 I'm very careful not to change the foundation. Because if the foundation is lost, where do the righteous stand? Where do where do we have now? Now, now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. You can change uh, service times. <laughs> you can change the songs. You can say we're not doing traditional. We're going to do contemporary. You can change all of those things. You can say we're going to have Saturday church. We're going to have church at well, one o'clock. We're going to have church at two o'clock. Whatever fits your fancy. That's an acceptable exchange. But when you start changing lifestyle, when you start saying that God is not requiring me again, if you're not saying if you're saying that God is not requiring me to live a certain lifestyle that is a consecrated lifestyle, that is a separate lifestyle, that is a set apart lifestyle, now you have modified beyond what God will glorify. Mm. Say it again. You can change song style. You can change. All of that, but when you say that there's no need for the anointing, there's no need for a lifestyle, then you have lost, and there's going to be some stumble. And what happens as a consequence, you start experiencing people die that was doing great things, trying to do a great thing. The Lord spoke to me yesterday. He said, be very specific in your direction to your people because it's the first Sunday of the year moving forward. There are many people that are trying to do good things, but they're not doing it the way God wanted it to be done. Mm -hmm. And so you're finding people that are dying trying to do good things in your ministry because you didn't give them the right direction. Mm -hmm. And we got to be very careful in this next season because I don't need people to be trying to help me doing good things. And they're not doing it the way God wanted it to be done. And now they're experiencing losses as opposed to wins. And we it's confusing. So now watch this. It is very confusing. Watch this. Watch this. As a consequence, David, when he see Uzzah uh, fall dead, he's, he's like, oh, my God, what just happened? We're trying to do what Saul didn't do. And now I'm finding people that are dying in my space. Oh, my God. So be very careful. Because this, the enemy can use this to make you afraid. Mm -hmm. But God is not trying to frighten you. He said, I want it to be done specifically like I directed it to be. I ordered it to be. That's the way I want it. So the eighth verse says this. It says, uh, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me see. Uh, and David uh, uh, was afraid. Let me, I'm just going to try to find out. What is this? Eight. Eight. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzziah. Watch this. And he called the name of the place Perez Uzziah to this day. Watch this. Ninth verse says, And David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? How am I going? This is too difficult, God. You got too many specifics on what you want. This is way too difficult. This is, 
there's many of you right now saying the same thing. I thought I'd done the right thing, but I'm still experiencing something. I don't think I'm the one. I don't think I can do it. I don't think I am called to this. I, th- I don't think I'm called. It, it, you are trying to work too hard in your own understanding. Hmm. Don't lean to your understanding. When you ask God the specific, he'll give you the simple direction, and he'll tell you exactly how to move. And so David said, I can't do it. So Timber said, so David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto, unto him into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of Obed Edom. In other words, the, 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 the ark failed right here in a specific spot in the front of Obed Edom's house. And so David said, I'm not going to try to take it any further. I'm just going to let it stay stagnant where it is. And so he pushed it into somebody's house that was not even scheduled to have it in the house. That was in his anger. That was in his anger and displeasure and, and, and him being afraid. When we are scared, displeased because something didn't go the way we wanted it to go and we had a good idea, now we start trying to make decisions based off of misunderstanding and then we start doing crazy things. Because your emotions never have any intellect. And so many right now, I know you're here, you're listening to me, and this has been your problem. It's not been God. You just didn't listen to the specific. Here's the difficulty. You're living in an a, 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 a era uh, 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 of society that don't think it matters. Mm. Whatever is whatever, whenever is whenever. But God says, that's not me because I'm not random. I am very specific about what I want. And he's returning again to the specific. That's why. He says, I am concealing the thing that gives me glory. I'm looking for the kings that are looking uh, uh, specifically for what I'm hidden. You're going to have to dig deep to find out what God is saying. Well, the verse says, and the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months, and the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all of his household. Wherever this anointing is about to land, land that's going to be a blessing. The 12th verse says, I think this is very interesting that when you look at this teaching, I think it's very powerful from this standpoint. The Bible goes through from verse number one of chapter six. It says, David goes down to verse number five, says, and David, it goes down to verse number eight. It says, and David, and then it goes to verse number nine, and David was afraid. It goes to verse number 10, so David would not remove the ark. And then the 11th verse said, and the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed, Edom, to get like three months, and the Lord blessed Obed Edom and all his household. Watch this. And it was told who? King David. Now it goes from him just being David now to him being King David. There's a certain position that you're going to have to be in to recognize and not be afraid of that that scared you in your past life. It's called the kingship. You are anointed for king. Now it says it's time for him to move this anointing but he can only go after it as a king, not just your regular self. If you're going to go after this, you're going to have to go after it in position. Here it is. God, God that, um, that conceals. It's God that conceals. But only the king. Only the king will seek it out. Yeah. Because he's given the direction to new leadership. Woo, he's given the direction to the anointing to new leadership. And so here it is. David... And it, said, and it was so King David saying, the Lord had blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertained unto him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness, mm-hmm. with gladness. Watch what the 13th verse says. And it was so that when they that bear the ark of God had gone six paces. Now listen to this. This was not an ox bearing the ark, the ark now. It was they. It was sitting on the right knee. This anointing, the anointing had to be carried by the right knee. Not by beast. <laughs> Boy, I could, I could open that thing up right there. Not by beast. Not by beast. See, see, it stumbled at first because of the beast that was carrying. Please hear me. This was carried by the right man that, that was sanctioned by God. Now, if you really look metaphorically in the spirit realm, a beast is, there's a word called bestiality. What does that mean? You know that. If you, you are psychological about it. What is bestiality? Yeah, or oh, having, having sexual uh, intercourse with animals, right? 
Is that what that is? Please hear this. Please hear this. If you are a shepherd and you are sleeping with the sheep. Mm. <laughs> my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> so the, the anointing cannot be carried on beast. Got to be carried by on the shoulders of the anointed men. Mm. I'm going to move on from that one. I'm going to move on from that one. And so it's, so it was when they that bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fertile. Now listen to this. David, who is already already a, a, a rich, watch this, it's very important that you hear this, already rich. Now he says, it's going to cost me something to move this anointing or have possession of it. Mm -hmm. And so it says that once he got possession of it, he cherished it so much. He didn't say, I got everything. He said, no, 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 no. David had a rule. And when he, you know, when he uh, uh, fell out of faith, he began to, um, uh, God gave him three choices as to what he could, his penalty was going to be. But he chose penalty that would affect him. And then when he went to the question for uh, Ari Una, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, 6, 7, 24, uh, 1 Chronicles 21. When he goes to the threshing floor, Aaron, he said, Aaron tried to give him the threshing floor as a king. David says, I will never, ever, 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 ever give God anything that don't cost me something. This thing is going to cost you something. And so David is saying, look here, I'm, I'm the king, but I'm about to sacrifice something. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. You're about to see some dancing. David wouldn't have danced if he had not accomplished and brought the, brought the uh, art back into the place. And then the says he danced <laughs> before the Lord that all, with all his might. And David was girded with the linen ephod. Listen to that. David, the king, these kings in this season, is going to seek the anointing. Here is David. He's got the ephod on, the dressing of a priest. He says, because these kings in this season are going to be priests. We want to honor God with our actions. We're going to put on the attire of God in, 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 in us replacing the anointing, bringing it back in place of the reverence of it. Once again, you put on a linen ephod. So I've got to do it right. The 15th verse says, So David and all of his house brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of trumpets. Can you imagine them coming in and David has ordered everybody? You're going to dance, you're going to make a noise, you're going to shout. Because God has given us the, 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 the desire to seek him. You're going to shout because God, you're going to recognize that the desire to seek him is rare in this season. And just because God has pricked your heart to seek him once again, that's enough shouting for. Everybody ain't got it. Everybody don't have it. They think they're right and good with what they are. Oh, that's fine. I think about every day being a young man that I have the desire to seek him. It's way. Mm -hmm. 16 verse, and the Lord came into the city of David. Michael, now here it is, here it is. Now I'm going to shut this thing down. And so here it is, David is bringing this ark with dancing and shouting and glorifying God. And Michael, the 16th verse, and Michael, here it is. Michael is David's gift from Saul because he looked Goliath. Okay. Michael is David's so-called gift because of a prior victory. Please hear me, my brothers and sisters. You don't have to be very careful who you are in relationship when you move into this next level of glory. That's a relation, close relationship that's going to have to be scrutinized in this next level of glory. Some gifts that you call gifts because it's a victory might not be applicable for your next level of glory. Now, here's the question. That's it. I was at 16th. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw the king, David, leading and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. Here it is somebody from an old regime, with an old mindset, from an old thought pattern is looking at the new and despising it because it does not look like a superficial life of the past. He ain't worried about who think what about him and how 
what he got on and how, how much stuff he's wearing to prove that he's this. And here it is with an old mindset that somebody he's in a relationship with and in a close relationship is despising the new. Be very careful. When God brings you into your new level, who you bring from an old relationship into this present, because they will despise, because they can only see the superficial and what was when God is bringing you to what is. Uh, uh, man, and she defies him in her heart. 17 verse, and they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in place, and in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David, here it is, he's offering sacrifice again. Here's what I got to drop into, into the hearing of some of you right now that's being talked about because now you see the anointing of God is back in place and God has chosen you to give a sacrifice that you're going to hear good people that you had a relationship with that should know going to say, you're giving too much. I sacrifice too much. It don't take all that. Oh, I don't believe that you're going. You're going to hear it because we've been hearing it. You're going to ignore it. You're going to do what God said because... It is the honor of a king to go after. Everybody was not anointed yes. to see what God is doing. So when you have good people, Michael was from the house of Saul. She should have known, but she had no idea. Why? Because her daddy didn't have no idea. And so when they start telling you you're doing too much, they don't know what it takes for you to be an order of God. Whatever sacrifices, God, there ain't no sacrifice. Why people, you better watch out. Them people trying to take advantage. They trying to do this. They have to, don't you listen to the devil rob you of God's order that brings blessings to your life. Let me move on. I don't want to get caught up into that. And as all the came to the city, they might saw the dog look through the window and said, and they brought the, the ark of the covenant put in place, they pitched, and he burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. The 18th verse said, and as soon as David had made an end, of the burnt offerings, look here, in the public place, this is how him in public, after he did the, the public uh, offerings, it, it blessed and blessing the people in the name of the Lord of the host, and he dwelt among the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well to the women as men, to everyone he gave, he dealt. Look at what David said. This new level of leadership is going to give bread to everybody. He said he gave a cake of bread and good piece of flesh and a flag of wine so all the people departed, everyone to his house with provision because new leadership has come in and said, I'm dwelling among you among the provision. It's not David, what David is suggesting, he's saying this. When God is blessing, he ain't just blessing one person. This blessing is in order for everybody to get a piece of it. It brings back the integrity of the body of being. It looks kind of strange when only one person Mm -hmm. is getting everything and everybody else looks destitute. So David said, let me share. Let me take away the reproach. Let me send you home with something. Now watch what it says in 21. Then David returned to bless his house. And Michael the daughter of Saul came out to meet David and said, how glorious was the king of Israel today who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servant. And one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. He said, I can't believe you. Do you keep your robe on and your watch on and your hat on and look like you were all of that? I can't believe that you would even dare to get common. I can't believe. I can't believe that you don't believe that it's the clothes that make you. I can't believe that you don't think. How can you dare bring dishonor to me and to all that we have built by being common with people? How dare you do that? That's what she's saying to him. Watch, watch what he said. David and David said unto Michael, "Here's David's rebuttal to his wife, the gift that he got from her, uh, uh, the passage." He said, "And David said unto Michael, it was before the Lord. Here it is. He's recognizing where all his blessings come from. He said, it was before the Lord who chose me before thou father, and before all his house to put me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore." Will I play before the Lord? I'm a dancer like I never danced before. I'm a, I'm a man. I'm going to give God glory like I never give God glory, God glory before. Twenty-seven words. I will yet be more vile than dust, and we will base in my own sight. I'm a humble myself in my own sight. I'm gonna know. I, I ain't worried about what people think. I'm a humble me in the front of me. Mm -hmm. I'm the first to think that I, I'm nothing without God before I do anything else. I want that to be my posture. Notice what it said. In my own sight, and of uh, the maid servant that thou spoke of, of them shall I have on. Everybody, you say they're gonna dishonor me because I got common with them. I'm actually gonna honor me. 
It's not because of who I am. It's because of what God has set me into, that people give honor to you. Watch what it says, 23rd verse, and the most powerful verse. No, I'm not going to say the most powerful. But here it is, and I'm going to be done. Watch this. Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no children until the day of her death. Everybody that despised this move would bring the anointing back into place, and David rejoicing because the anointing was back in place. Even his closest allies are supposed to be closest allies. Here's what the scripture says. They could not give birth because they despised the move of God. They could not give birth because they despised. Michael, his wife, could not give birth because she despised what he had done in obedience to God. Amen, amen, amen. Let's pray, let's pray. Let's Because I, I start all over again. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today. Thank you for this word. Thank you for seeking the place that you're calling us to. Thank you for our heart's desire. I pray that the desire, again, was spread over your people to seek after your word, to seek after your heart, to seek after what you are saying. Again, like never before. Like never before, God. We stand before you. We come before you seeking your will. Lord, I thank you for the return of your glory in the body of Christ. Lord, I thank you for your move in this earth like never before. I thank you for the people that you're using right now, giving the fortitude. God, give them the courage, give them the faith, God. Give them the boldness to stand up and follow your direction. I thank you right now. Thank you for the new kingdoms that are in place. I thank you right now for them being focused and not being distracted by what the Game says the same, what the close people are saying. God, I, th- I, I thank you for focus to, to finish. Let's focus to finish what you have committed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for today. Thank you for this word. If you will do me a great favor, share this with your friends, share this with people. I, our, our objective here at Lunchtop Uplift is to bring the word of God, to bring the instruction of God, to especially to those people that have gotten some, got something inside them and need an instruction from God. Need, need, need to hear. I need to be clear about what God has said. I don't want you to die with potential. I want you to die with the dream. It's time for us to follow God's instruction and walk into it. Walk into it. Walk into it. Walk into it. Be a good courage. Be a good faith. It will happen. Seek God in the next few days and the specifics of what it is. That I'm supposed to be doing. I don't need to waste time. I don't need to waste any time. I don't need to play no games. I don't want to play those petty games. I don't want to play that. I want to be in the will of God because that's where my provision is. That's where you're going to ride. That's where you're going to sit. Sit. Allow God to be God in your life. Amen. What's up? You done? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you hear me ask her, is she done? Amen. We're really thankful people. We're really, really thankful people. Thank you, Leah. Thank you so much, Pastor DJ, Sonia, uh, uh, Jackson. Thank you so much, Christy. Thank you so much, Christy. Pastor Nolan. Thank you so much, Donald. Thank you so much, Pastor Baltimore. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, who else? Mom, thank you so much. Uh, sometimes I'm having bad connections. I hope it. Mr. Lee Clark, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Bishop Sandy Beard. What's up, Pastor? Bishop. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Who else is in the house? Uh, Shirley Walker is in the house. Tambria White is in the house. Uh, uh, Valerie, the sister is in the house. Kathy Burrell, thank you, Kathy. Um, who else? Uh, Raquel, thank you so much. Uh, Kelly Allen, congratulations, Kelly. Happy anniversary to you and Steve. Who else is all right. Well, anyways, bless us, bless us. Go to YouTube. I have this up within an hour. Go to YouTube. Pastor G and Network of Believers. We'll have this up within the hour. For those of you that have a desire to uh, sow a seed into this, if you had a desire, the address is there. Did you put the address in there today? She's already got the address in there. We are extremely grateful, thank you, thankful. So all of you guys that have already done so, we really, really, really appreciate all that you've done and all that you do. 
lessons on you. I'm doing two or three times things at a time. I am multi texting, but I'm about to get out of here because it's time for us to go. We don't spend. You know, you know, have you guys noticed that whenever my wife is here with me, I go over time. Every time she's here with me, I go over time. She pushes me to go over time. You know what you do, babe? She always pushes me to go over time. And I thank God for it. Amen. Look, look forward to the blessings of God invading your faith this year. For those that really want it to happen, I'm telling you, it's going to happen for you. You cannot imagine what you're about to see from your God concerning you. Because he loves you just that much. So, holla, 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 holla. All right. See you guys later. Thank you so much. We are out of here. Blessed week to you guys. All right. All right. Here we are. We're out. Love you. Peace, peace, peace.